Okay. Hey guys, I'm here with David W. Ross, the writer, producer, and main actor of the new film, I Do, which is now available on Netflix. So how did you come up with the idea of the film? Uh, it, was, it was quite a long time ago. It took me a long time to write the script. Mm -hmm. um, I had been through a relationship with somebody from England who couldn't get their paperwork. And he had to go back to England, and of course I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. And then I'd been doing a lot of um, photography for the Prop 8 rallies and a lot of the marriage equality stuff that mm -hmm. was happening in California. And I looked out and noticed a lot of families and people that just wanted to be together in terms of immigration. Mm -hmm. And the Defense of Marriage Act, of course, was a federal level law that barred any kind of federal level um, say stuff that's not the right word but anything any protections at the mm -hmm. federal at, at the federal level was barred for same-sex couples because of DOMA um, immigration being one of them so it was a combination of that and then just hearing so many stories over the years being English you know one of the questions is how do you get your green card yeah. I'm actually an American citizen as well as being an English citizen but um, so yeah, I would hear all these crazy stories and it kind of all culminated into mm -hmm. I do so would you say this movie is based on a true story of your life or a majority of it? It's based on a relationship that I had and then, yeah, things that I've heard through, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> through the grapevine, as it were. So how long did it take exactly for you to come up with a script? I know you said that it took a while. Yeah, I wrote a, a, a one-scene breakup um, between a girl and a boy who ended up, obviously it was a green card marriage, I wrote that quite a few years ago, and then a friend of mine said that she wanted to workshop it, and actors seemed to, seemed to like the scene, and then someone suggested that I write a feature film. Well, I'd never touched a feature film. I have a history of music, so I know how to write songs and lyrics, but I'd never really tackled something as big as, you know, 90 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, so I taught myself how to write. And then I went through this process where I had uh, my producing partner at the time, Stephen Israel, he was trying to... It was, it was, we were trying to push it in a direction that was more comedic, and in the end I wasn't happy with that. So I went away for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I kind of had talked to a director that I really liked about it, and he suggested that I write the film that I want to write, mm -hmm. not write the film you think people are going to like. So that's when it kind of took a turn. And did you help out with the casting? We had amazing casting directors, mm -hmm. and I know that my agency at the time helped um, get the script out to Jamie Lynn and Alicia Witt, and then the casting directors came in and they brought us some amazing people. Maurice Compte, was, uh, who plays my boyfriend in the film, I actually saw a bunch of tapes, and, uh, and I saw him straight away and was like, that's Mano, I just yeah. knew. So they, the casting directors did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. And out of, I know you guys have Tara, or I don't know her real name. Tara? Sorry. Tara. Yeah. But how old is she when, she, when you guys were filming? She was, I think, five. Mm -hmm. She had her birthday, but I think she was five. But she turned five when we were filming. Did she have a hard time memorizing the lines, she, or she was good at it? She literally, in the audition, she uh -huh. came in. We auditioned maybe 20 kids, yeah. and I was on the edge of my seat. I had mm -hmm. no idea what was going to come out of her mouth next, and I'd written the scenes. So that was an amazing experience. And then to, I bonded very quickly with her in the audition mm -hmm. room. And then on set, she was word perfect. And Glenn, the director, would say, OK, let's do some stuff off script. So she would mess around, mm -hmm. and we, we would kind of ad lib. And then we'd go back to the script, and then she would be word perfect again. Mm -hmm. Which is like consummate professional at five years old. So I'm almost already an adult, pretty much, acting like... And then what would you say was the hardest part while filming? Um, the hardest part? Well, you know, there was a lot of stress on the set, and I mm -hmm. think that comes with any movie making. Um, I must say that the cast and crew made my life a lot easier, mm -hmm. and I had a great time on set. I think being a producer as well as the writer and the lead can be a bit off-putting mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, but we had a great time, and... I think the, the hardest thing for me was uh, was um, is, was the ending, <laughs> you know, for two uh -huh. or three weeks going on set with this group of people that we all we all knew why we were making the mm -hmm. film, so we were all having to work on a lower lower budget mm -hmm. and not cut corners, but yeah, I mean cut corners, mm -hmm. but I think we all knew why we were there and what we wanted the script to say about the LGBT experience mm -hmm. in America at that time. And how long did the, the whole filming take? 
The actual uh, production was, I mm. think, two weeks, a little over two weeks, and then we did uh, two or three days in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we did uh, a couple of days in New York. And um, I think pre-production was two or three months, uh -huh. and then post-production was about three months as well. So I know in the last scene, your character was supposed to pretend to go to Spain. So where uh -huh. was that actually then? Oh, okay. So um, that was actually in a vineyard near San Diego. Uh -huh. And it was, I guess, I can't remember the name of it now, but yeah, it was a vineyard in San Diego. <laughs> but was the rest of the movie shot in New York then? No, really? no. Not at all? We shot most of it in LA, and then we spent two, two days, three days in total, but two days mm -hmm. shooting in New York. And what would you say was, like, the most emotional scene for you to do? The most emotional scene was a scene where I have a, the, the breakdown mm -hmm. scene, where I'm in the kitchen and I'm drinking, and then I, I go to possibly do something really stupid mm -hmm. um that was I'd warned everybody about that scene mm -hmm. everyone knew that scene was coming and of course the way the day was structured that was one of the final scenes to mm -hmm. be shot and it was the end of the day and people were packing up and right after that scene mm -hmm. which was very emotional and very difficult I had to then get naked and get in the shower yeah. <laughs> so that <laughs> shower scene which everyone kind of talks about um that actually was being done while the, everyone was packing up mm -hmm. the lights and the equipment and I was being yelled at by the DP, yeah. get in the shower! <laughs> <laughs> was everyone watching you while you did that shower scene? Or? No, because the bathroom was teeny tiny, thank oh. goodness. I mean, it was literally this, like, you, I think you can see the size uh -huh. of it in the film. It's tiny, it's yeah. tiny. So it was, I didn't want anyone else but the DP mm -hmm. and me to be in there. So it was just me and the DP. Yeah. So it wasn't, like, uncomfortable or anything? No, and it was so quick. And uh -huh. I was completely hidden, yeah. apart from, you know, that long shot. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be gratuitous. Mm -hmm. And it, wasn't, it was meant to be, uh, as you see in the film, more of uh, Ali, who's my green card wife in the film. She's gay in the film. Um, she is more like, oh, there's a naked man in the shower. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Or was she in love with me? I don't know. I mean, my intention as a writer was that she had never really seen mm -hmm. a naked man in that way before. And mm -hmm. she was just kind of like, huh, well, that's interesting. Oh, shit, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So what do you think made Ali change her mind about not going through with the divorce thing? Or the, the fake divorce, whichever you'd like to call it? I just think that she got scared when mm -hmm. when the, the uh, fantasy of what they were doing got surpassed by the reality mm -hmm. of what they were doing. I think the biggest story that I wanted to tell in terms of uh, where we are in our culture with marriage is that we're brought up in a very heterocentric culture that is shown images from a very young age of uh, a man and a woman possibly wearing a tuxedo and a, and a white wedding dress, eating white cake. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of the destination for a lot of heterosexual people. Mm -hmm. And I think heterosexual people feel trapped within that. But gay people never really had that opportunity, even though we're growing up in a psychological soup, that all that is ordained for you guys is to get married. And then that's why I think it caused so much stuff for, for people that were LGBT, because they didn't fit within what they were being shown. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that she gets caught up in that. She gets caught up in the fantasy of, oh, we're really married, even though they're not really mm -hmm. married, but they are married, but they're not. And then the reality of the situation, oh, this is illegal and we could go to federal prison, surpasses her, you know, the, 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 the fantasy falls, falls apart in, in the face of the reality of the situation. And since she wanted the divorce, and I know that your character was advised to just find another person to get married, do you think wouldn't that, have, like, that caused more suspicion then? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think that, you know, when you're desperate and you don't know, when there's no legal pathway mm -hmm. to, to immigration, um, you might do stuff that is, is, is you know, not appropriate or mm -hmm. um, illegal, you know. Um, and I think that thankfully now we're in a post-DOMA world where people don't have to go through that, you know. Every day I see on on my uh, Facebook feed, people that are getting their green cards. Yeah. And it's just a whole new amazing world, which I do is now a historical kind of document as to what it was like in some ways before, you know. I know you said that Ali's character has never seen a naked man or had any kind of involvement. Mm -hmm. So was the kiss for her, was that her first kiss with a man? Would you say? Um, besides like a dad, maybe? 
Maybe, but I know that in the backstory they were like crazy, you know, friends getting drunk mm. and doing crazy stuff together. Maybe they made out as a joke or whatever. But no, yeah, pretty much. I think that that moment for her was the moment when she realized, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I'm actually m married. Yeah. Not married for a green mm -hmm. card, but oh my goodness, I'm married. Yeah. And I think that's when her mind started kind of ticking. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't, like, how she pictured her first marriage, maybe, everything. Or that something kicked mm -hmm. off deep inside mm -hmm. of her psychologically because she'd grown up in a society that had always focused on women must get married and mm -hmm. have kids, which, you know, I think is ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I think that's when all her subconscious kicked in and it kind of, it, it became more real to her mm -hmm. than I think Jack. Jack was more like... Yay, great, you know, my best friend married me, so I can get my green card. And she's she started kind of freaking out a little bit, I think. And this movie, I have to say, it's not really the love, like a, the typical love story where it's mainly just about a relationship, and it's actually more emotional. So what message or what idea do you want people to feel after they watch it? Um, it definitely was going for em emotional, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I also wanted people to, and I, I'm really lucky to be getting a lot of emails mm -hmm. or, you know, from around the world when people are seeing it, that it really affected their perception of what it was like, mm -hmm. what it is still like in many countries, right? Um, and what it's like in quite a few states still where marriage is not legal. Um, and then also to realize why we need gay marriage, why we need mm -hmm. rules and protections, that in fact it's not about the white puffy dress and the cake and the tuxedo and the having the kids. It's about having the protection when you love somebody that when they're dying, you can get into the, the hospital room, that um, decisions are not ba made by the parents. Mm -hmm. If you're together, you know, that, that your relationship is, is deemed, um, do you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it, it kind of trumps trumps outside forces and a lot of times with gay relationships end of life stuff or really important things would happen and the parents who may not even have spoken to the yeah. to the kid would come in and make decisions that just uh, are heartbreaking so I think that's what I wanted to leave people with so if you were to make like the part two of the movie would you focus on the like the a wedding between your character and Manu or would you have Ali find a love or what would you think you would do for it well, it would be based in Spain, mm -hmm. and it would be Jack and uh, Mano's and Jack's struggle uh, with Mano's father, mm -hmm. how for him to kind of rectify his uh, ideas because of his upbringing, religion, and being a man, and, you know, machismo or machismo, or whatever, um, and then, of course... Tara wanting the pull of mm -hmm. Tara wanting to come to, to live in Spain and Jack wanting to go back and be with his family. Yeah. So that whole dynamic would be quite interesting. And, you know, it's good to make films in Spain because the government pays for the, <laughs> for the would budget. Would you really go to Spain this time or would it be still? <laughs> yes, I would go to Spain. I would so go to Spain. <laughs> but you know what? Actually, you saying that, it's quite funny that... Um, I could probably do a sequel and film it here. Uh -huh. You're right. But I would need really good Spanish-speaking actors and actresses, which I'm sure there's mm -hmm. plenty of in this, in yeah. this town, actually, right? Yeah, definitely. Wow, yeah. you might have talked me into doing the sequel. <laughs> I mean, you tried. I really like the movie, actually. Thank Even you. Even I was a little bit tired, too, but then I was watching it, and it was really, like, hooked onto oh, it. Oh, cool. And so